Hi guys, I'm David. Welcome to today's episode of Discovering Bikes. On this episode, we're going to be going through the garage update, my new VFR 800, and my everyday bike, my CBR 150R. If you guys like this content, please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. It helps us hugely. We've got a lot more to come, so stick around. So guys, as you can see here, this is my beautiful VFR 800. It is a 2010 with 23,700 Ks on the clock. The reason I bought this bike is when I was a lot younger, when I was 18, 19, I got to experience one of these and the sound alone just made me fall in love. It really sounds amazing. In very, very simple form, it's a V8 cut in half, if being a V4, so it's the, the four cylinders going like this. And trust me, when you hear it, you'll know it's one of, one of these. They just sound amazing. So one of the, my big things that I was looking for in a bike is having a very comfortable seat and having a very comfortable seat for pillion. I'm going to be riding a lot with friends, with my girlfriend and going touring because as you guys can see it's got the uh, pannier bar uh, on it. I do have the pannier boxes, they are just off at the moment because I'm not touring right now. Um, so I mean this bike is kind of one for everything. Uh, the reason I personally didn't get like a GS or something along that kind of line is because to me it's a Hilux in the city. You know, you'll use it one in every 15 times off-road, where this, you can ride sporty with your friends, you can go out and enjoy kind of the long roads, you can enjoy the highways, you can go touring like long distances and overnight, you can go camping, you know, it's a very, very versatile bike. The build quality for me is also a huge thing. Uh, this bike has extremely good build quality. The plastics and everything, you can just feel is very solid. It's not made on the cheap, it's not like poorly put together. Everything just comes together nicely. Another big draw for me is the sweet single-sided swing arm. It reminds me a lot of a 996 Ducati. That is a dream bike for me, but unfortunately I'm not there yet, so this would be the best option. It does also have a rear preload adjustment, so if I do have someone in the back, you can kind of just uh, turn it up a few notches just to make it a bit stiffer. It does have custom exhaust, that's why this doesn't look normal. They are the laser exhaust, which is very cool. They make the right sound. It's also the right pipe to have for this bike, according to a lot of people I know. Um, but I mean, you can see there are some faults. Like if you look here, it is quite scratched. Um, this little piece here behind needs to be cleaned up. But I think what I'm gonna do is we're gonna document all the little things that we do to the bike and you know, just show you guys what it, uh, how we go about doing it in South Africa, you know, where we can get the stuff done locally, what it costs locally. You know, that's a lot of things that you can't really find on the internet is, you know, where do you get these things sorted out? As soon as you look for a video, it's all on Amazon or in the US or in the UK or, you know, nothing really local. Uh, being in the industry that I am in, I do know a lot of people who can sort this out. So hopefully we can help you guys uh, and kind of just grow the community as one. I will also be doing the pair and the flapper mod to this. For those who don't know, it's basically the initial one to 4,000 RPM intake it just kind of smoothens that all out. Uh, I will be doing a technical video on that to give you guys a lot more insight on how to do it and where to do it if you need to. Otherwise, besides that, I am very happy with the with everything. The gold wheels I do love, the gold bits are awesome, but I also want to change these little bar ends. Uh, they are starting to fade, as you guys can see, it's nice and gold on the top and slightly faded on the bottom. But I think overall, it's good. I'm really happy with it now. I've just put a new set of Angel GTs on front and rear. That was a massive improvement already. Uh, I did that through Track Mac and Pardon Island. Fantastic service. The guys, they really know what they're doing. And yeah, I think that's it. Um, I'm really happy with it. Stay tuned. We're going to be doing a lot more to it as we go. So guys, onto my 150 that I have here. Uh, it is a little bit dirty, but it's because I ride it every day and it was just raining during the week. Uh, the reason I own this bike, I know it seems a bit weird that I've got an 800 and then a 150, is because this is just the dream machine to go to work and back on. The fuel tank, it costs about 60 Rand to fill up and then it lasts you about a month or so. I can't even remember the last time I filled up this thing. Um, I had a BWS that a lot of you guys are hard sore about and I'm sorry, but I moved on to this because it's got that little bit more power to kind of ride safely. You know, on the old scoot, when you go full taps, you get to about 70 and then it just, uh, that's it, they're done. Where this, you can at least get to 120 comfortably if you're on the highway and you know, you've got that little bit more power uh, through town. Um, it is also nice and small, there's no big panniers, there's nothing like that, it's just very slim, very thin, not thick, um, and allows you to dive through traffic quite easily. Um, it also, it doesn't make enough power to do anything dangerously, it makes it all of 18 horsepower, which may seem like a lot. It's also got the, the boss and the exhaust on it, which makes quite a lot of uh, pops and bangs, as you guys like to call them. Um, 
Also, it's quite a quite a cool livery. I, I really like the red and the black. It goes quite nicely. There's also a few things I would personally like to do to this bike. Um, I want to sort out a couple of the little marks on it. I want to wash it, obviously. Um, there is a crack on the fender here uh, and just kind of neaten it up overall. Once again, we will be filming all of those things. So you guys are able also to find out where we do things and how we do them. But yeah, besides that, it's just, it's the perfect commuter. This for every day and then that for the weekend. Funny enough, it also has quite a good headlight. That is also another thing that drew, uh, drew me to it initially. Um, a lot of the guys are raving saying it's quite an easy bike to ride at night. You know, you don't have to worry about that many things. The only issue I have with it is that the dials are not illuminated enough. There's one at like a light at 30, a light at 70, and then a light at 140, I think it is. But we all know that this is not going to get there. I bought it like this. It's got 30,000 Ks on it. It's had about four owners. I actually managed to track down all the owners. Um, it's got a little five or six liter fuel tank and just runs forever. It's very comfortable, nimble, and I love it. If you can, I definitely recommend getting a small bike and a bigger one. It just makes a lot of sense. Unless you have a car and a big bike, then that's the best kind of combination. We will be doing reviews on both these bikes in our new series called Used Reviews, where we cover all the used bikes, well not all the used bikes, but bikes on the used market. Um, for you guys to understand how it's like to own bikes with high mileage or how to own bikes, or what it's like to own bikes that have got certain mods to them or how it's like to own bikes that are slightly different to the norm. We plan to review enduro bikes, street bikes, super bikes, slow bikes, fast bikes, you name it, we will be covering it. If you'd like us to review your bike or have something very cool that you know of, please don't forget to get in contact with us and we will be happy to set something up. We are based in Cape Town, but I'm sure things can be arranged. See you guys in the next video. Cheers.